Well, am I ever excited about today's episode? It's June 21st, 2021. And today we're going to be opening up the mailbag and answering your questions on Lake Summerside. I want to recognize today as National Indigenous Peoples Day. And I'm coming to you live from Treaty 6 territory. And today we're going to be answering some of your questions from the mailbags. And I'd like to give you some other, other updates as well that Equality has been up to with some of the management that we've been doing at Summerside Lake. Of course, you've already met us. We're Equality Environmental Consulting. We're just down the street from you folks on 75th Street. And we've been tasked with facing some of the challenges that the lake endures. Myself, my name is Jay White. I'm the principal researcher at Equality Environmental. I've been a professional biologist for 25 years and doing lake management projects my entire career. And I'm really excited for the opportunity to be assisting Lake Summerside. Along with me is Corey Steffiura. He's not able to make the episode today, but of course he's leading the fisheries components of the lake. And his update this week includes the removal of over 5,000 invasive perch from the lake from our last outing in the spring. And we were able to target all of those perch and not kill any of the desirable species. So we didn't kill any of the trout that are in the lake. So that was really exciting that we had zero bycatch from the removal of perch that we had this spring. And of course, he was also there when we restocked the lake with another 2,500 rainbow trout. And my understanding is there's going to be some tiger trout being stocked in the fall when they're ready. So that's really exciting too. So that'll make for some really great fishing opportunities at the lake. This June 21 updates follows from our May 5th introductory video that addressed the management plan and some of the recommendations that we have for maintaining a beautiful Summerside Lake. One of the interesting uh, tasks that we've started up is this new Ask a Biologist program. So every couple of weeks or so, if you write in, uh, a quality staff will answer them in a video. And this is our very first episode of that, so I'm really excited to be a part of this. So let's dig into the mailbag and see exactly what we've got. So Elizabeth writes, should we expect to have swimmers itch again this year? And my short answer, Elizabeth, is yes. Um, obviously, you've got a natural system that we're dealing with there. We've got wild animals that are accessing the lake. You've got ducks and geese and those sort of things that are accessing the lake. And of course, it's those ducks and the geese that are responsible for bringing this parasite into Lake Summerside. And I just wanted to introduce a little bit about how this works. So at the top of this figure, you see a duck or a bird or a seagull, and they, of course, poop in your water. Inside the animal's poop, we've got eggs of that parasite. And those eggs hatch in the water column on vegetation or in the sediment. And those eggs hatch and they find an intermediate host. And in Summerside's case, it's a natural native snail that we have growing in the lake, a mollusk. And of course, once the eggs hatch inside that mollusk, they shed these little um, cercariae. And the cercaria are what's the problem in Summerside Lake and, and, and what causes the swimmer's itch. So these free swimming cercaria are carried by wind currents. They swim usually at the top of the water column and they swim, they can swim very far. And they're looking for the duck host to reinfect and to start the cycle all over again. But what happens is, is they drill into our skin. And of course, our immune system kicks in right away and it kills them, but they've already sort of burrowed into our skin and they cause these big red itchy bumps. And these bumps are incredibly itchy, especially 24 to 72 hours after the cercaria have you know, died after penetrating our skin. And it's, uh, it's not harmful but it's uh, quite a nuisance and uh, kind of unsightly as well, as you can see from a couple of the photos that we've got there. There's some great resources on swimmers itch, uh, even the School of Public Health from the University of Alberta and, and Dr. Patrick Hannington, who's one of the North American experts on swimmers itch. And you can check out some 10 things that you need to know about swimmers itch. And I highly recommend you visiting this website from the School of Public Health, it is excellent. And another resource that I highly recommend you visit is the swimmersitch.info website as well. And you'll find all sorts of information there. And they're interested more in about mapping your itch 
and you can learn a whole lot more about how Swimmer's Itch works. And of course, one of the things that I'm working with the Lake Summerside Residents Association on is perhaps some of the ways that we can prevent Swimmer's Itch from happening uh, in Summerside. So we're continuing some work on, in that regard as well. So please check out those resources. I think you'll find them uh, very useful. Our second question comes today from Natasha. And Natasha writes, can you expand on the thought of floating plant life near the water fountain and how that would impact residents who access the lake from the west side for swimming and boating, etc.? Thanks for your for writing in Natasha. That's a really great question. We're still contemplating how we're going to be putting in some of those larger plants to strip out phosphorus from the water column in that area. I don't think we'd have any uh, free floating plants in there. I think they're going to be large rooted macrophytes, so emergent vegetation that are really good at sucking phosphorus out of the water column. And those are some of the plants that we've got targeted for that area and probably with a, a gravel amendment, uh, which would additionally help uh, absorb out some of that phosphorus. And then, of course, um, with some biofilms that grow on the rocks, that would additionally help get some of that phosphorus out of there. So uh, really great questions today. We really appreciate uh, uh, people taking the time to write in. And I look forward to the opportunity to address these. So that's going to wrap up today's episode. I'm really grateful for you taking your time and writing in today. So thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you at the lake. Thank you very much.